Hey everyone, how's it going? Today I want to talk a little bit about one of my favorite aircraft designs, at least visually speaking, in the A-10 Thunderbolt. Originally conceived of back in the mid-1960s, the A-10 was created in an effort to improve upon ground attack aircraft like the Douglas A-1 Sky Raider to have a greater armament, greater performance, and greater defense. While the Sky Raider was and is a solid plane for what it is, as technology progressed and engines grew stronger, the Sky Raider became increasingly outdated, and in its place would come something like the A-10. Designed to serve as a close air support aircraft, working in conjunction with ground troops and striking enemy armor, troops, and strongholds alike, the A-10 was, and still is, an excellent aircraft. Armed mainly with a 30mm Gatling gun with over 1,000 rounds, along with an ever-changing assortment of bombs and missiles, the A-10 combines an excellent armament with excellent control and maneuverability at low altitudes and excellent defensive capabilities. Surrounding the pilot, is 1,200 pounds of titanium plating that can repel direct hits from 23mm caliber weapons, and the control system on it is both hydraulic and mechanical. So if the hydraulic system gets damaged, the pilot can still control the plane mechanically. Things like this mean that the A-10 can take substantial damage and still remain in the air which is incredibly valuable for a close air support design that will be subject to substantial ground fire. But above all else though, when I'm playing a video game like Ace Combat, I really like it when I unlock the A-10 and can use it, even though it has poor top speed and poor air-to-air -air capabilities, looking cool is nine-tenths of the battle, so if I use the A-10 then I'm always winning. But why are we talking about the A-10? Well, it's pretty simple and also kinda stupid. Our subject for today, at least to me, looks like a proto-A-10, the World War II-era grandfather of the A-10. Even though technically the P-47 Thunderbolt was more the World War II-era grandfather, as that's where the A-10 Thunderbolt gets its name, but I digress. This is the proto-A-10, that if it had made it into combat, probably would have been an important piece of late war advances on Germany and Japan. This is the Beechcraft XA-38 Grizzly. Now, the start of the Grizzly story is a little fuzzy, get it? Grizzly bears are fuzzy. But it starts sometime in 1942 and gets to the same place regardless. The story of the Grizzly starts in either March or late 1942, in either a more private venture from Beechcraft or a venture in response to the U.S. military. If it was the former, Beechcraft began investing and designing for a bomber-destroyer design to be proposed to the U.S. military at a later date. As a bomber-destroyer, the prospective design would have a very heavy forward armament to be used almost exclusively to just vaporize large bombers, and the guns on such a design would almost certainly be large cannon or cannons. Later that year, in a search by the U.S. Army Air Force to eventually replace the Douglas A-20 Havoc, a bomber and ground attacker, specifically to replace it in its ground attacker role, Beechcraft would either alter their current design to fit that request, or they would now start designing such a plane. So basically some say that the design started as a bomber destroyer and then was converted over, and some say it was always a ground attacker to begin with. But either way, in December 1942, Beechcraft was awarded a contract for their Model 28 design, designated by the U.S. Army Air Force as the XA-38, and Beechcraft would begin production of two prototypes. The XA-38 design would strongly resemble another Beechcraft design in their Model 18, 
a twin-engine, twin-tail fin utility plane. But in actuality, the XA-38 was a completely separate, unique design. Measuring in at 15.77 meters long, 20.52 meters wide, and 4.72 meters tall, the XA-38 was overall larger than the Douglas A-20 that it was intended to replace. With a gross weight of 29,900 pounds and a max weight of 35,265 pounds, it was also several thousand pounds heavier as well. While the A-20 was largely a bomber and could carry around 4,000 pounds of explosives, the XA-38 was to be a largely gun-based ground attacker, although it still could carry 2,000 pounds of explosives externally, and it would use its heavy cannons to pierce enemy armor and enemy fortifications. Located in the nose was a massive 75mm T-15E1 cannon, with 20 rounds at its disposal. Firing around every 1.2 seconds, the Grizzly could deplete its cannon in just 24 seconds. Backing up that massive cannon was a total of 6 50 caliber machine guns with 500 rounds per gun. Two of them would be forward firing in the nose, two of them would be in a dorsal turret, and two would be in a ventral turret. These turrets would be remotely operated by a second crew member located in the rear fuselage, where you see that second canopy. These turrets appear to have full 360 degree coverage, and presumably could fire forward in support of the other main guns. With the increased size and increased weight over the A-20, you would assume that the flight performance would be diminished, but you would be wrong. Powered by a pair of Wright R3350 radial engines, the same engine that was used by the Boeing B-29 Superfortress with 2,300 horsepower apiece, the XA-38 would handle shockingly well for its size and weight, and would have a pretty amazing top speed to boot. At a relatively low altitude of 3,100 feet, the XA-38 would hit a top speed of 376.5 miles an hour. Now, while I can't confirm, I do suspect that this top speed was achieved with no active or simulated weapon load, as the listed combat top speed at 5,000 feet was 348 miles an hour. But regardless though, for a plane its size at lower altitudes, such a top speed was simply outstanding and as that top speed would increase upwards of 370 miles an hour at high altitudes, it is very much possible that the XA-38 could have still ended up serving quite well as a bomber destroyer. It had both the speed and the weaponry. But to fully demonstrate the low altitude speed capability of the XA-38 on one particular flight test, a P-51B Mustang was brought in for some comparison. While the P-51B was a little bit different than the more well-known P-51D, its overall top speed was just about equal, sitting at around 440 miles an hour at high altitudes. The top speed would be lower at sea level, at best around 380, but likely around 365. But still, this would be a major challenge for the XA-38, and amazingly, flying at low altitude, the XA-38 actually managed to outpace the P-51B. Further testing would confirm that the XA-38 controlled incredibly well, and was remarkably agile for its size. The overall picture that was forming was incredibly promising, and the XA-38 was well on its way to being one of the better designs of World War II in general. Which is also why it's quite sad to say that the XA-38 never advanced past the second prototype, and past some flight and weapon trials for that second prototype, 
the XA-38 went nowhere and had no career. While the performance was certainly excellent, there were two key factors working against the design. The first and probably biggest obstacle was the B-29 Superfortress. Now, Beechcraft wasn't making the B-29 on the side or anything, and that was somehow taking up their time or something like that, but more the fact that the XA-38 shared its engines with the B-29 ended up kind of being a mistake. With the state of the war in late 1944 and into 1945, strategic bombers like the B-29 would have far more value, with their ability to just level enemy logistics and production facilities, and so the available R-3350 engines were earmarked first and foremost for the B-29. The XA-38 could pick up some extra spare engines when they were available, but for a plane that would ideally be entering full-scale production, this system just wouldn't work. The second and related obstacle was the fact that at this stage of the war, and with where technology was going, the XA-38 just wasn't needed anymore. By the time the XA-38 would have reached full-scale production, and those planes would have been delivered and the pilots trained on them, the war probably would have been just about over. And with jet engine technology on the come-up, the piston engines of the Grizzly would pretty quickly be overshadowed. Now, to be fair, this engine point didn't matter all that much, as a plane like the A-1 Sky Raider served several decades after the war ended as a propeller-powered ground attacker, but still, for the XA-38, that would have been an additional factor regardless. So, sadly, as the XA-38 was no longer needed and thus no longer wanted, the promising design would meet a sad and quiet end. One of the prototypes was sent to an Air Force base in Arizona in 1948, and it isn't definitively known what happened to it, as that was not recorded, but in all likelihood it was scrapped. And the other prototype was almost certainly scrapped as well. The only surviving piece of the XA-38 is the 75mm cannon it used, currently on display, at the United States Air Force Armament Museum in Florida. Ultimately, to me at least, the Grizzly sits as this distant relative on the family tree of planes like the A-10. But instead of being a prominent and crucial branch, it's more like that great-great-great-uncle from like a hundred years ago that was one of 15 children, and he died after getting stuck in a cotton gin because that's what happened back a hundred years ago. Wow, this got depressing all of a sudden. So, on that very sad note, we're gonna go ahead and end for today. So, thank you all for watching. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Back on the whole A-10 in Ace Combat Games thing, the problem with using the A-10 is that in any given mission, even if the mission is a dedicated ground attack mission, there'll almost inevitably be some kind of addendum to the mission where you have to do some air-to-air -air combat. So you'll be using the A-10, and all of a sudden some Su-27s will come screaming in, and you have to take them out. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope you learned something. So, see ya!